So I'm adding in a little bit of white to get a little more opacity. Get a little more glow. When you want to do a dry brush technique like this, you don't need a lot of water or you don't need a lot of paint on the brush. I'm actually kind of dipping my, my brush in and then wiping some off and then going in and scumbling. Now with her hair, I do want to incorporate that more too. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the Payne's Gray, kind of create like a wash. Let's see how I like that. Just gonna give her a little bit more of a painted look. Soften some of these edges a little bit, or kind of actually define them. But then I can also use the paint to kind of cut in and create shapes. So I'm keeping it a little bit watered down because I don't want it to look, you know, too like plasticky or separate from the photograph. So I'm more like tinting it. And again, this sort of connects her a little bit more by bringing the color in. I'm going to go ahead and very carefully tint her, um, the other shadows on her face a little bit. And again, this is giving me an opportunity to you know, kind of play with the hair, add in some shapes, take away shapes. I want to play with it a little bit. But I think this is just so much fun where you get to almost recreate a photograph and kind of make it your own and it's, it's, it's super fun.
um, and truly, I think collage really strengthens your design skills. I just, I just think it does. So sometimes I like to um, go ahead and go into a photo like this and kind of add in some light. Even if it's just subtle, I think it can be kind of nice. And again, you sort of start to get that little bit less. I mean, obviously it's a photograph and I'm not trying to make it not look like a photograph, but um, just to integrate it a little bit, even adding some light into the eyes. To kind of bring it to life a little bit, connect it a little bit more to um, to the painted aspects here. And then the other thing that you could consider doing something like this is um, actually adding some color or light into her face as if the flames are respond, you know, she's getting some reflection from, from the light down here her chest. And this is just a um, Karen Ash Supra Color Soft. It's actually water soluble so you could um, I could activate it at this if I wanted to, if I want to take a, a little brush. And activate that. Or not, you know, I absolutely have to. But it can sometimes be kind of neat to think about where, if there's the, if all this light is coming from the fire within, you know, it's kind of neat to show it. reacting on her face, maybe a little bit. Even in her eyes. <sighs> this is where you kind of get to play a little bit with the photograph. even a little touch of redness into her cheeks. You know, it could be really subtle.
almost that hand coloring effect, you know, when you have old photos that have been hand, like, recolored. It's kind of a pretty look. Keep getting, there we go. Got a little bit of junk from my palette. This is um, a Stabilo pencil, so very black, so I have to be careful how I use it. This is just um, uh, a Jelly Roll number eight by Sakura, one of my favorite gel pens. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make some stars. Try not to smear them as I make them. You can see like how fun this is and it's so relaxing and what a great way to explore a theme, um, explore a concept, play with your compositional skills, but really just have some fun and not get too hung up about making anything perfect or um, any of that sort of nonsense, you know? Just letting yourself play. I love working this way. And I'm really glad that you guys requested that I do something like this because it's super fun for me. I mean, I, I like love it. And it is fun to share um, some different mixed media techniques for art journaling and, you know, it's creating a really fun page.
and I'm making a huge mess, which is also fun. I don't know about you guys, but when I do collage, it is like, I always make a mess when I make art, but when I do collage, it's like a whole nother level. And it really is fun to explore the symbolism of your own, you know, inner creative fire. Like what kind of images come to you when you think of that? Because um, obviously it's a pretty powerful, it's a pretty powerful image. You know, it's probably going to be different for everyone. Now, this is also when you need to stop and kind of look at what you've done. You know, what are you liking? What are you not liking? Where do you want to change things? Um, I'm going to go in with a micron, uh, pen, a micron pen right now and just bring a little bit of sharpness to your eyes. Just make sure that your um, work is completely dry before you try adding you know, any of the micron in there. Otherwise, the pen gets really quite upset. I'm going back in a little bit with the micron and delineating some of the shapes kind of loosely of the moth. Just to kind of add in a little bit of graphic element. And I think I am going to go in with the white around the, um, the circle and kind of tighten it up a bit. I need a pretty fine brush for that. So I'm going to use um, the Artie Shills round brush in zero. Just clean up some of the shapes here. I really don't need to do this stage, but I just want to because I'm having so much fun. I don't really want to stop. So, you know, keep going. If it's giving you joy, I say keep going until you are really happy with what's going on. 
it's worth it to push yourself past the uncertainty and the the doubt stage, the ugly stage, right? Because getting to the other side of that feels really good. And if you guys are interested in more of this kind of collage, if you haven't taken um, my Klimt class, the Gilded Brush, I definitely do this kind, this more of this kind of of collage where we really incorporate elements and make them work for us and really create a pretty powerful um, composition in the end. Um, it's really a lot of fun. And so many students have made just the most gorgeous work in there. It's really phenomenal. Now I do have a bronze color um, in our color palette, which I could incorporate here. It's also, you know, even though that this is in my sketchbook and, you know, it's, it's just for fun, um, I still do, you know, hold it up away from myself and, and look at the composition and see what's working and what's not working. You know, I still think that's really vital and important to do, even if you're just playing in your sketchbook. Because like I mentioned, this kind of work can really strengthen your composition skills. So still view it like you would, you know, a piece outside your sketchbook in terms of analyzing it after you're coming to a place of, you know, you're closer to completion. Don't forget to look at it and say, you know, where could I change something or where could I, um, you know, edit something. Because being able to analyze, you know, self-analyze your work is really quite important. Of course, I'm adding in the light in my favorite spots which is like the corner of the eyes. Um, you know, the bow of the lips. So I haven't used the bronze anywhere. Where would I use the bronze? Hmm. This bronze color is really pretty. It's called pearl copper gold. Sorry, not bronze, not, it's copper, not bronze. My bad. So I was gonna use it somewhere, I'd probably use it center of this moth. Maybe. Alright, I can't resist. I think I'm going to tint her lips a little bit red. I mean, you know, we're using red and it's just hard not to do that. So I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go for it. Pretty subtle. I might get a deeper red. Let's do um, scarlet red. I do love all the reds that they offer um, with the Artezas. I think they're kind of fun. I 
I don't want this to look like Barbie painted on red, so it's like kind of a delicate operation here. I also don't want to lose the, the value of her lips. Oh my gosh, she totally needed that. Yes, better. You guys are probably screaming at me like, put some lipstick on that girl. Um, yeah, so I did add a touch of the bronze just for fun into the center of the moth. But yeah, this is my vision of my, my inner fire, if you will, um, my inner creative fire. So it's in me, it's fluttering, it's powerful, um, and it comes out of me. Um, so I'll be excited to see how you guys interpret this. And obviously, please go in any direction that feels right to you. Um, I love making this. And I hope you guys learned some new mixed media uh, techniques or you were able to just kind of revisit some that you already know. And I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Thank you so much for being a part of this with me. And as always, um, just know that I'm super grateful um, for you being here. And I will see you in the group and in the classroom. I will talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.